On this week's John Dulong Show, we're talking about a few legal cases because that's all that I've had the time to think about or read. Also, the Ontario election and my vague insecurities and anxieties about that. On to the show! Well, hey, hello, and how are you? Welcome to the John Dulong Show. Welcome to episode number 32, second week on Friday here. Welcome to the Friday morning fracas. I don't know. I'm still working on it, guys. I still haven't come up with something new. Um, the Monday Morning Nonsense was a good title, but uh, I don't know. I just I, I do feel better about releasing the show on Fridays for whatever reason. Um, anyhow. Come on in, take a seat, hope that you're having a great week, or that you had a great week, I guess we're at the end of it. Weekend's just about to start, I actually have the weekend off, miracle among miracles, Um, I have uh, great plans to um, frolic in what's probably going to be a pretty rainy cold day. (laughs) We had uh, had a nice little bout of uh, of real summertime weather for a couple of days here in Halifax, and um, then it sort of turned around, and earlier this week it was like six degrees and rainy and cold and windy and just awful like it was like it was like proper like autumn weather um i'm not a huge fan of autumn i know a lot of people are i know that's like a lot of people's favorite season i've never been a fan i've always been a summer kid uh summer like maybe it's just like the whole you know school's out for summer uh deal it might be that my birthday is in the summer i i don't know um i just always like i like I like the sun uh, not going down until later in the day. Uh, I like I like getting a tan. I I, I just enjoy uh, enjoy the summer all, all all around. I like getting that uh, like getting that vitamin D. And as long as I have air conditioning, I'm I'm uh, I'm a happy happy podcast host. Um, so speaking of moving to uh, Fridays. Um, I've been rethinking about the show uh, over the last little while. Like I say, we're on to episode number uh, number 31. We're past the halfway mark of our first year here on the show. When I started this show, uh, it was kind of um, really, really loosely defined. Uh, You might even say ill-defined. You might even say ill-conceived. All of that was very much by design. Um, I wanted to present this show in such a way that uh, I wasn't beholden to a particular format. I wasn't beholden to a particular uh, set of topics. And that way I would always have something to talk about. You know, if it was something in the news that I was interested in in a given week, I'd talk about that. If If it was a big, exciting week in professional wrestling, I would talk about that. If Liverpool were on the cusp, of winning their sixth Champions League trophy, fuck you, Sergio Ramos. We would talk about that, um, but you know, it's it's what it's become is just sort of this amorphous blob. Where if I'm talking to somebody at a party, and of course I'm going to bring up that I hold, host a podcast because I'm that idiot, um, I always kind of struggle to answer the natural question. Oh, what's it about? Um, so I'm, I've given some thought to this, and I'm going to try a little experiment next week, um, and I, I you know, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, the show will still have a lot of the same elements that it ha- always has had. Occasionally we'll have guests on the show. Occasionally I'll do an interview. Uh, I'm going to be talking about things that interest me. It's still going to be sort of that amorphous uh, set of different uh, different topics, um, you know, from from professional wrestling to, uh, to Liverpool Football Club to uh, to corruption in the news to what's going on in the world, you know, like all of those things will still be there. Um, what we're going to try though is, uh, you know, for a week that I don't have a guest, which I don't plan on having one next week. Um, I haven't, uh, I haven't reached out to anybody yet anyhow. So, you know, God knows if, if somebody comes up, we'll scrap this and we'll do it the following week. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, kind of a, a daily, uh, a daily log in a way. Um, still going to be talking about things in the same way that I'm talking about them today, uh, but just looking at it from a hey, today is, you know, Friday, uh, June 8th. That's going to be Friday, right? Yeah, that's that's when this episode came out. Uh, hey, today's Friday, June 8th, and uh, here's what went on for me today. Here's what I read. Here's what I did. Here's uh, what was interesting to me today. 
um, you know, we'll do that for uh, for a seven day stretch, a little four or five minute block for each day, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit shorter, depending on how things go. Um, you know, might might end up missing a day. You know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But to sit down and just do the podcast in that way, because what I kind of realized recently is what this show really is uh, more than anything else. Is it's kind of like an audio blog in a lot of ways in that, like, you know, it's sometimes I uh, I have I have significant points to make. Uh, sometimes I'm just shouting into the abyss and uh, and hoping that somebody is interested in it. Um, and it's kind of uh, that's kind of what I like about this show is that it's uh, it's not um, it's not really designed to be something that maybe has a wild wide appeal. Uh, it's it's always going to be a show that's just uh, about what I want to put out in the world and it's about me creating something uh, and presenting it uh, presenting it to the audience that uh, that does find it at least vaguely interesting and i'm so glad that you are here so like i said uh, in the intro this week we're going to talk about a few different uh few different legal cases that have come across my desk this week uh in particular uh we're going to talk about uh brock turner some interesting news about the uh the swimmer with the glowing future ahead of him or whatever it was uh we're going to talk about a couple out in bc who were bonkers and got the kid taken away. Um, really kind of tragic, actual, uh, actually, mental health issues going on there. Um, and then, of course, we're also going to talk, because I can't not talk about professional wrestling, you know, every every other episode, or else, you know, I die or something. Uh, after that, we're also going to talk about a, uh, a big decision coming out of Chicago. That's right, CM Punk and Colt Cabana. Not guilty, as according to a jury of their peers. So uh, all of that starts on the other side of this, but uh, but first, before we get into that, we're going to talk about that uh, that election really quickly. The one that's uh, well, you know the results. I don't. I'll be paying close attention to that on uh, on uh, Thursday evening, um, which is yesterday for you. The Ontario provincial election. After this. Just a quick reminder, um, if you are into The Simpsons, if you're into podcasting and you want to maybe help me out with a little project that's coming up over the next couple of months, please email into the show, Show at gmail.com, uh, and put Simpsons in the subject line. I'll be getting in touch with folks about this fairly soon. Um, I don't want to put any timeline on it yet, though, uh, because life is, uh, life is bonkers lately. Speaking of bonkers, there's the segues that you come and you come and strive for i don't know um so uh right now uh you probably know the uh the results of the ontario provincial election um the only thing that i'm confident saying uh, as a outsider to that election um you know recording this in the past of course uh is that it is a new premier in uh, in ontario um so the, the story basically goes if you're not familiar um, which, if you live in Canada, you probably are because it's dominating the news. Um, the uh, the Liberal Party in Ontario is incredibly unpopular. They've been in charge for forever and a day, uh, and you know, generally speaking, after you know, after any you know any any rule over a decade, and uh, you've got a pretty limited shelf life uh, in terms of uh, in terms of your stewardship being uh, continued. So, Kathleen Wynne, um, who I believe. Uh, was Canada's first um, openly gay uh, premier. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I believe that she uh, believed that she was. Um, she conceded defeat like days before the election even went down. Uh, the polling for the Liberal Party was that bad. So it came down to uh, one of the other two major parties in Ontario. Uh, and it was basically a two-horse race between... Um, Andrea Horvath's NDP, New Democratic Party, they're the sort of uh, left-leaning party here in Canada, whereas the Liberals are sort of the the center, center-left-ish, kind of more center-right at times, you know, depending on, depending, basically depending on how the, uh, how the prevailing winds are blowing in, in Canada at any given time. The Liberal Party is kind of all things to all people, it seems. Um, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad or a good thing. I think it's just a thing. Um, uh, you know, they, they, 
govern quite centrally. They, you know, are sometimes very uh, socially liberal. They're sometimes a little bit more conservative, um, certainly tend to be a little bit more on the fiscally conservative side. Why am I giving you a political science lecture uh, on the party structure in Canada? I don't know, but here we are. Um So it's between Andrea Horvath's NDP and uh, the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario, headed up by Doug Ford. Now, if that name sounds vaguely familiar to you, um, it's probably because he is Rob Ford's brother, um, a.k.a. uh, the crack mayor of Ontario, uh, the late crack mayor of Ontario, um, and sort of the uh, the proto Donald Trump, um, certainly the uh, the the sort of originator of the Donald Trump uh, political playbook. Uh, really, if you want to sort of point to how um, how Trump rose and sort of the, his, his, certainly in terms of his, uh, his, media, his media strategies, uh, you need look no further uh, than how Rob Ford did things. Um, so yeah, Doug Ford, um, probably the premier of Ontario as we're talking right now, and he did it in the only way that you expect a Ford uh, to do it. Didn't talk about this election too much on this show, just simply because um, I, to be perfectly honest, have only been paying a cursory, uh, cursory, cursory glance towards it just because I thought it was such an open and shut um, election for the progressive conservatives. Of course, um, uh, the reason Doug Ford is the uh, is the leader of the uh, Progressive Conservative Party is that former uh, former leader and you know basically premier elect uh, Patrick Brown, which I think I did cover this on the show, um, had been uh, accused of sexual uh, misconduct by uh, by two women um, who were like significantly younger than him, and there's some question about whether or not one was uh, was underage at the time, um, whether or not she was underage at the time. There was still a kind of an uncomfortable uh, both age and power gap uh, at play there. So uh, out went Patrick Brown. In came uh, in came Doug Ford. Um, the a lot of interesting things gone on in this election. Um, you know, I I I have to hand it to um, to this is a weird sentence to say for me. I have to hand it to Doug Ford. Uh, he's played this almost perfectly um didn't have uh didn't have actual like media following him in the sort of the typical uh election sort of way instead he kind of had a his own like media wing uh creating you know stories i guess in sort of a news sort of style um which is like both fascinating and horrifying at the same time you know kind of a a strange sort of glimpse into a you know i don't want to get too or you know too too deep in calling it Orwellian, but like, you know, it's a bit creepy, um, that he's, uh, you know, shedding the, uh, the typical news sort of thing, because like, he, here's the thing about a Doug Ford is that he has his base in the same way that Trump has his base, you know, like Ford nation. It, it, it exists as a thing. These are the people, these are the, you know, he could shoot uh, a guy in the middle of like, well, let's Canadianize it a little bit in the middle of Bay street. And he wouldn't lose a point with them. Um, You know, it's just the just the way that it is. Um, Other interesting things about this election campaign um, was sort of the way that they started covering it. um, And by they, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, news outlets covering um, the uh, the polls in terms of uh, in terms of how things uh, were going. Now, all this may sound a little bit silly if uh, if Andrea Horvath did happen to uh, did happen to eke out the wind uh, last night. But, um, you know, like Ford. And uh, and Horvath are, were shown going into the election sort of being uh, neck and neck in a way. But realistically, what that was was a, 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 a snapshot poll of um, of the actual popular vote, which was not how things are, are done um, in Ontario and in Canada. And uh, uh, as, as a whole, we do the whole first past the post thing. Um, so if Horvath looks like she's ahead in terms of the popular vote, that might give the NDP a bit of a momentum um, going into the election, but ultimately, you know, whether that actually trans trans uh, translates into uh, actual seats that would allow the NDP to form a government is, uh, you know, let certainly uh, for me anyhow, yet to be seen. Uh, And I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit doubtful. Um, Maybe I'm being, maybe I'm being just a a sad, sad skeptic here, but uh, that's, you know, that's just roughly speaking, um, 
roughly speaking, how I uh, how I feel about it. Other interesting thing is like just 48 hours before the election or something like that. Uh, Rob Ford's um, widow, Renata, uh, slaps Doug, Doug Ford with a lawsuit, uh, apparently like alleging that he um, mismanaged, essentially mismanaged the uh, the sticker company that uh, that Rob had been running and Doug then took over. Um, also um, denied her and um, and her. 